As we come to the end of the book of Genesis, Jacob is giving his final blessings to his twelve sons. In the Haftarah, David is giving final orders for the dispensation of his friends and his enemies. And we will examine the final words of Yeshua on the cross, sometimes called the last seven words. Because they are drawn from the different gospel accounts, there is no exact known order in which they were uttered. However, scholars generally accept the following sequence as pieced together from the different accounts. 1. From Luke 23:34, Then said Yeshua, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Until the very end, Yeshua remained true to his calling. We read in Psalm 103, 3, Who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases. In three of the four Gospels, the religious leaders questioned him about his authority to forgive sin. In the incident, which is related in Matthew 9, Mark 2, and Luke 5, Yeshua proves his authority by healing the man's disease. Yeshua taught us to forgive even in the most extreme circumstances. Luke 6, 27-29 But I say to you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And to him that smites you on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that takes away your cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Yeshua practiced what he preached, forgiving those who have wrongfully accused and spitefully abused him, as it is written, For God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? This is from Numbers 23:19. In the midst of his excruciating suffering, Yeshua understands the problems each person has been caught up in, problems that have warped each one's nature away from the nature of God. The nature of Yeshua's love is unconditional and divine. 2. From Luke 23:43, And Yeshua said to him, Verily I say to you, Today you shall be with me in paradise. To the criminal who was crucified with Messiah, the one who had recognized who he was and expressed faith in him as Savior, Yeshua guarantees entry into heaven. Romans 3:23-24. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Messiah Yeshua. And also Ephesians 2, 8-9. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There is no doubt that the man on the cross, next to Yeshua, is a gross sinner, yet grace is freely poured out to him by virtue of that man's faith. 3. From John nineteen twenty six and 27. When Yeshua therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. Yeshua, as the firstborn son of his mother Mary, is responsible to care for her in her old age. His earthly father Joseph is long gone. He fulfills the task by turning her over to the beloved disciple John. In fact, all the other disciples and all his earthly brothers have fled, and only John, the three Marys, and his mother's sister remain from all his followers to witness the crucifixion. Until the end, Yeshua does not forget his responsibility, not only for her eternal life, but for her current material life. As it is written in Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Messiah Yeshua. 4. From Matthew twenty seven forty six and Mark fifteen thirty four. In about the ninth hour Yeshua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Yeshua's day, and even today, among Orthodox and ultra Orthodox Jews, no one quotes just one Bible verse just to be quoting it. The verse is always held in context. For example, if I said, For God so loved the world, you would be able to finish that verse in your mind and know I was referring to a lot more than the fact 
that God loves people everywhere. Here, as Yeshua cries out the opening words of Psalm 22, there is more to be understood than the fact that the Father would have had to turn himself away as Yeshua took all the sin of the world onto himself in order that he could make complete atonement for it. It was quite apparent the agony Yeshua felt as he expressed separation from God. David has given a very complete picture of the crucifixion hundreds of years before this method of the death penalty was even invented. Yes, Yeshua cries out in his extreme human pain and his separation from the Father, but his quote of Psalm 22, verse 1, means so much more to those who can hear him. As we examine the rest of the psalm, we find these crucial prophecies. From verses 6 and 7, All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in Yehovah that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. From verses 14 and 15, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws, and you have brought me into the dust of death. From verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. 5. From John 19.28 After this, Yeshua, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Indeed, we have just heard of the dryness of his mouth. The verse is also a reference to a prophecy in Psalm 69.21. They also gave me gall, which is a poisonous plant, for my food. And for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. In Psalm 69, again, we find many references to the crucifixion. From verse 3, I am weary of my crying, my throat is dried, mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. From verse 8, I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. Remember, none of them were there for the event. From verse 26, For they persecute him whom you have smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom you have wounded. In addition, concerning Yeshua's lack of intimacy with the Father at this moment, we are reminded of another kind of thirst. Psalm 42, 1 and 2. As the deer pants after the water brooks, so pants my soul after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? 6. From John 19.30 When Yeshua, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Not only is Messiah's physical and mortal life at an end, but the work that he came to do here on earth is finished. In complete obedience, he gave himself up to be the payment and redemption for the sins of the whole world. Philippians 2, 6-8 Who, being made in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be a equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In Mark 10.45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. 1 John 3.8, The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 7. From Luke 23, 46. Yeshua called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Here Yeshua cites another Psalm, 31, verse 5. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, Jehovah, God of truth. We see his complete trust in his heavenly Father. Yeshua entered death in the same way he lived each day of his life, offering up his life as the perfect sacrifice and placing himself in the Father's hand. From verse 1 of this psalm, In you, Jehovah, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me. From verse 9, Have mercy upon me, Jehovah, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief. Yes, 
my soul, and my belly. From verse 11, I was a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to my acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. This verse in particular reminds us of Isaiah 53, 3. He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Again from Psalm 31, verse 22. For I said in my haste, I am cut off before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried to you. The seven words, so much prophecy spoken and so much prophecy fulfilled on that day 2,000 years ago. On that beautiful, scandalous night, you and me were atoned by His